Hello, I'm Nicole Bonilla. Now I realize the recent Mulan live action movie has received very mixed reviews, but I was very impressed with the beautiful cinematography, the elaborate costumes, and the gorgeous musical score. So to celebrate what I find most inspiring about the story of Mulan, I recreated her red battle outfit and did a contemporary portrait photo shoot in my studio. I'm going to take you behind the scenes to how I planned, designed, and created Mulan's red battle outfit, how I found the perfect kung fu athlete to portray Mulan, how I designed three different setups for the photo shoot, and then finally the portrait reveal. I went to my local Goodwill and bought a couple of bed sheets to use for the jacket and the pants and an undershirt. I went to Joann's and bought a little bit of red velour for the jacket. And I have an old men's leather jacket that I've been using for the last couple of years and just kind of cutting pieces off as I need them. I was lucky enough to find a replica of Mulan's sword online before they were all sold out. For her robe, I'll use a basic bathrobe pattern. The shoulder seams will be slightly off the shoulder. The sleeves will be long and full. I'll include a three inch wide neckband that will continue down the length of the robe. She'll wear an oversized leather belt. For her hip guards, I'll make faux metal plates and use recycled leather. Underneath her robe, she'll wear a mock blouse with a simple crossover neckline. Her pants will have a simple elastic waistband and straight legs that will tuck into her boots. Making the robe was fairly straightforward. I did, however, alter the back of the robe to have two panels split below the waist. So the back has a seam across the waistline with a slit below it to allow Milan full flexibility in battle. I like to use both my sewing machine and my serger in most of my outfits. Having them side by side on my sewing cabinet makes it super convenient for switching back and forth. The pants came together very quickly as they only include two pattern pieces. The elastic in the waistband makes them super comfortable and functional. To avoid the bulk and added warmth of having a long sleeve shirt worn under the jacket, I made a mock blouse which basically only includes the neckline. This was also very quick and easy to make as it only includes two pieces of fabric. Knowing this outfit would be worn in an indoor photo shoot, I wanted my model to be as cool and comfortable as possible. After lots of brainstorming to find the best solution for making Mulan's hip armor, I decided to use silver metallic cardstock for the many, many metal plates. Since I knew I needed way too many to cut them out by hand, I decided to make a custom die line and used a craft die cutting machine. My friend Kara Jones let me borrow her cameo silhouette and I designed my metal plate in Adobe Illustrator. Once the sheets were printed, I had to manually pop them out and remove the slits. Each plate also needed to be lightly sanded around the edges with a nail file to remove extra little pieces of paper. And to get a unique, like battle-worn finish on each of the plates, I busted into my scrapbooking supplies and used my distressing ink stamps. I combined black, light, and dark brown to make each plate look worn in and tarnished. Since the plates are made out of paper, I decided to spray on a coat of matte protective finish to make them stronger and a little moisture resistant. I purchased some red shoelaces from Amazon to stitch my faux metal plates together. I overlapped one set of holes across the top of the plates and stitched through them. Then I stitched back across the bottom of the plates through the single hole. My 16 year old son is already an accomplished artist and I was able to talk him into illustrating the dragon motif that goes on the bottom of Milan's hip plates. He started with a color study using a digital tablet in Photoshop. Then I printed out the artwork on my Canon Pro 1000 at the correct size and orientation. Then my son painted the design directly onto the leather pieces using acrylic craft paint. And he made me promise I would not show his face on camera. To make the hip pieces, I laid out the metal plates and cut paper patterns I would need for the leather. Then I spread out my leather jacket scraps to find large enough pieces to accommodate my patterns. I used a thicker brown fabric for the large hip piece to thicken the leather pieces at the top of the hip armor, I used dark brown sheets of craft foam. Then I spray glued my leather pieces to the foam. I wrapped the leather around three of the edges of the foam and was easily able to top stitch through the foam and leather on my sewing machine. Once I secured the ends of the red laces with a little hot glue, 
I proceeded to hot glue the top of the strips of plates to the hip piece. Since this armor won't have to withstand actual battle, I figured this was the best and easiest option. I knew the strips of plates would need to be secure across the top, but flexible across the bottom. I continued to glue each strip in place slightly under the strip above it. Then I applied spray adhesive to the backs of the bottom leather strips with the dragon illustration and secured them in place. To make the belt loops, I cut one by four inch strips of leather from the leather jacket and turned back both long edges and stitched them in place. Then I stitched three belt loops to each hip piece. To finish off the long edges of the hip pieces, I cut four long strips from the leather jacket. I ran a bead of hot glue to secure them in place on the back of the hip piece. This made it so much easier to then top stitch the front of the leather strip around the edges of the faux metal plate strips. As the finishing touch on the belt loops, I very carefully applied hot glue to the back side of some prong studs and secured them in place. I found the perfect belt at Goodwill, but it wasn't quite long enough to look oversized on the lawn. So I sacrificed another belt I already had in my closet and cut an extension piece. Then I cut my good belt in half and marked four holes in each end. Then I used a crocodile hole punch and eyelet setter to easily punch the holes. I marked the hole placement in both ends of my extension piece and cut out those holes as well. Then I used pieces of leather trim and tied the pieces together and secured them with square knots. First, I traced and modified the comb design from the movie using Adobe Illustrator. Then I imported my design to Adobe Photoshop and created a 3D design in the 3D Studio. I exported my 3D file and sent it to Kurt Biven of 3D Creatables to print the comb. He was quick and affordable and printed my comb design in a gray resin. It was so cool to watch the comb rising up out of the liquid material. Once printed, I spray painted the comb with a silver metallic paint. For the metal flower, I went to Hobby Lobby and found a cream colored metal flower that looked really close to Milan's comb. I also bought a bottle of teal metallic paint and quickly painted the cream colored petals. Then I simply hot glued the flower base to the comb. I don't think there's anything that you can't hot glue. It's not every day you get to work on recreating the outfit of a legendary hero, and this outfit was so much fun to work on. Mulan's jacket in the movie has a cloud motif embroidered into the trim of the jacket, so since I didn't have access to create that embroidery, I used this red velour fabric instead, which creates some contrast to the jacket and still gives it that regal look. I'm also really happy with the result of using the cardstock paper as these little metal plates on the hip armor and the leather pieces I used from the men's leather jacket really give it a rough and authentic look. And I was able to find these simple slouch boots on the Walmart website, which will definitely finish off the outfit. I believe the ancestors must have been smiling down on me because I found the perfect young lady to portray Mulan in my photo shoot. Master De Bao Meng founded the Shaolin Temple Cultural Center of Arizona for martial arts, and he and his wife Brenda happened to live in my community. When Brenda heard about my project, she suggested one of their top Shaolin Kung Fu students named Annika Wang to be Mulan. My mom got me into Kung Fu because when she was a kid, she was really um, fascinated, I guess, with martial arts and self-defense. So she really wanted to take classes, but she didn't really have the resources to when she was a kid. When we grew up in America, she was like, uh, I really want my daughters to like be able to like defend themselves and you know, when when it's necessary. So I started with my sister. I remember I would sit in on her class and I'd be like, like wow, like I was, like, like she was, I was really fascinated with the things that I saw. So when I was old enough, I was like, Mom, I really want to take classes. I really like Kung Fu because not only does it provide like physical exercise, um, it gives you like a break from schoolwork and like just everyday life. So kind of relaxing in a sense. My favorite weapon used to be the fan because uh, my Chinese name is Wang Yifan, so my um, nickname would be like Fan Fan, like Fan Fan. So I always thought there was like a connection. And, but now I feel like um, it's changed a little bit. I think now I really like, um, if it's not the sword, then it's the nine section whip because um, they're both really flashy and really loud. And I think it's like, <laughs> like when I do it, it's like everyone's like, Told you I'm cool. <laughs> Playing Mulan and like kind of getting to like know about like Mulan's story um, kind of taught me that like it's 
society is kind of like, oh, you're like a female, you know, you gotta be like beautiful, you gotta be whatever. Um, but like being uh, able to like portray Mulan is more like, I can be beautiful, I can be strong, I can be whatever I want. It's kind of like liberating in a sense. It's like, ah, like this is me <laughs> and not what someone else wants me to be. I planned three different settings for the photo shoot. The first was using my brown painted backdrop for a classic antiquated feel, combined with soft Rembrandt light. I wanted to visually bring the focus to the sword and its origin and portray Mulan's respect for it. I didn't really know what to expect, I guess, like when we were uh, taking the pictures, but then like looking back now, like everything is like, it comes together like so well. Like, uh, especially at the ones where I'm like kind of in the background, like the sword is like at the focus. It captures like the, the theme of the movie, I guess, which is like, there's like the, the battle, like the country is like at the center, but like in the back, that's like kind of like what is supporting the country, like protecting it is just a girl, which is like blurry in the background. The second setup was in front of my light gray painted backdrop and I used much brighter light. Annika brought out her array of weapons and we photographed her moves with each of them. You did a really good job like playing along, like just amazing, like, being serious. It was all, it was all, all was all her work. Yeah. <laughs> I just did what I was told. <laughs> Not only from the story of Mulan, but also from this project in general, I see like the beauty and like the uniqueness of creativity. So going forward, I feel like I'm gonna try to be more myself, to create, uh, express myself um, more in a creative way, to be myself, to be strong, to be powerful. In one scene in the movie, the villain is dressed in black and a black scarf blows off in the wind, symbolizing his evil intentions. So to portray the villain in my portraits, I used several yards of black chiffon fabric and had my assistant throw them in the shots. And I just think it's like really cool to be able to see like myself like in her like outfit and like her like weapons and stuff. Like it's just like I'm like living as the like, on. For the final setup, I used a red paper backdrop. I wanted to create a very ethereal feel with the combination of the red backdrop, Mulan's red coat, and a red fan. I also brought in some red chiffon fabric to be thrown to enhance the dreamlike feel. So when I first walked in and I saw the pictures, um, I was definitely really sh like shocked, um, in awe. I was like, um, that's like not me. Like, no, I don't look like that. Like, I do not look that good at all. A major theme in the movie was um, the three words on Mulan's sword, um, loyalty, bravery, and truthfulness. So I think going forward, um, I'm gonna try to incorporate that into my life as well, to be loyal, to be brave, and to be true to myself. I couldn't have asked for a more delightful young lady who I believe embodies Mulan's noble attributes. I have definitely felt inspired to embrace my inner strength and live a little more loyal, brave, and true. If you like this video, don't leave without clicking the like button. And if you'd like to see more behind the scenes videos like this one, please click the subscribe button.